Right now you're hearing all your favorite music on your favorite station. But wait, there's more. More songs from the artists you love on exclusive stations by Odyssey. Just open the Odyssey app and click exclusive stations, then a genre to dive deeper into. A station might be just music, or maybe hosted by Ed Sheeran, Chris Martin, or one of your favorite DJs. Across alternative pop, country, soft rock, Latin, R&B, kids, and even and more. more. Get more with exclusive stations by Odyssey. Brought to you by Macy's, Geico, and Coke Zero Sugar. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable organized timeline the chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life please contact me today at choose the right chapter.com that's choose the right chapter.com 99.9 KISW the rock of Seattle oh, Alex Trebek continues to be the man I'm telling you the world's loving this guy Oh, you can do it, Steve. Hell yeah. There you are. That's right. Got a lot of buttons to push, BJ. Yeah. Don't worry, though. I knew you'd get there. One of the contestants on Jeopardy plays roller derby in Indiana and uh, said to Alex, you know, that her team, they got some uh, roller derby nicknames for him. I play as Scar of David. And when I told my teammates I was coming on the show, we tried to think of a derby name for you. So we came up with a couple of options. You okay. could be uh, Impale X Trebek, Alex Treblock, or uh, the very simple Double Jeopardy. That would be exciting. Thank you for thinking of me in that regard. He I'm sounds too sexy for my shirt. So sexy it hurts. Talk about a contradiction. That would be exciting. That sounds <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that was really patronizing right there. I'm a little drunk, and I need you now. Uh, yeah. I mean, arguably, that's kind of how he sounds all most of the time. But still, yeah. he, he, what is he, 90 now? I mean, he's just like, I don't care what you people are doing. I don't doing. think he's quite 90 yet, but yeah, yeah he's up there. He is Stupid a- answers. Yeah. That's <laughs> okay, it. so what would be your guys' uh, roller derby name? I love roller derby names. I think that is one of my favorite parts about roller derby is that they, they come up with some of the craziest, you know, play on words. Yeah, how about uh, BJ Shank? BJ Shank. Oh. Yeah, I uh, like that. That's, that's way good, better than mine. What's yours? Mig Newton. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Mig <laughs> Newton. I was just trying to think of something that went with Mig. It's supposed to be like violent, isn't it? Well, I'm, I'm very cerebral. Oh, Mig mm-hmm. Newton. Okay. Rev actually gave me mine a long time ago. Oh, yeah? It's Holly Peño. Holly Peño? That is pretty That's great. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was great. It was yeah. when she was deciding that she wanted to uh, go uh, do derby, and that really didn't go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually not that coordinated. Mm. Huh. I would have you on my team, though, Vicky, because you fall down and hurry and get hurt and jinx. I mean, I think it'd be great because you just, all people be tripping over you. I got a better one. You got a better one than, uh, what was it, Migs Newton? Mig Newton. Okay, what's the better, better one for you? Squeal like a Mig. <laughs> I do I like mean, that. I like that one better. Yeah. yeah. It is better. All right, Rev, Rev, do you got one? I don't have one. I can't Come on, Rev. One. Man, oh. I can't. Yeah, I, the I, Reverend and Poopo. <laughs> great, thanks. I think actually the Reverend Fuego probably would be yeah. the roller derby name. How do you make it more nickname of a nickname? Yeah, yeah right. The Reverend yeah. Impaler. Oh, that's good. All right. Ooh. So, so not all uh, not all roller derby names are supposed to be like uh, you're like violent then, because Holly Peno's cute. It's not violent. They're more like fun play on words, but definitely yeah. they're, they're supposed to kind of come off a little badass. Yeah. I mean, Holly Holly Peno's are pretty spicy. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah Holly Peno is just too clever not to use. <laughs> right. Yeah, it really is. How, How about, about Danny? Danny Vigilante. Oh, well, because, uh, yeah, that's cool. Not bad, not bad. Thank you. Or how about kick your Danny, as in kick your fanny? Oh, I like that. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't Early know. man. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. Listen, Holly, I think we're going to have to get back to you on that one. I'm just looking online some of the funny uh, roller derby names that some people have listed down, and I think this one's awesome. The Little Gur Maid. Ooh, see? Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> that one there, is, uh, that's a good one. Hermione Danger. Oh, yeah, like Hermione Granger from Harry Potter. Alice and wound her land. <laughs> that, that sounds... That, yeah, it sounds wrong. Yeah. 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 Oh, con, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, like you weren't thinking of that? Yeah. 
<laughs> I tell my look at his face like, yeah. Gortisha like, Adams. Oh, oh, that's a really good one. Yeah, I like that. Blood soaked skater. <laughs> that could Ooh, be Danny's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be tear soaked though. The idea, I don't know. Blood soaked skater doesn't sound. The skater doesn't sound right either. Okay. Intoxic. Intoxicate. Oh, I like that. Misfortune. Yeah, misfortune's a classic. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Plenty of good ones there. Yeah, some good ones. But are they as good but as Holly Pena? Uh, no. Or, uh, well, yeah. I found one. Uh, I was looking up Star Trek themed one for you. How about Captain Painway? Oh, yeah. yeah Captain Janeway one. is one of the old oh, Star Trek captains. I was like, I don't yeah. get it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. She was the female <laughs> captain on the old uh, Voyager show. Yeah. That's it. Captain Painway. I like Captain Painway. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Oh, this is tough, man. A 36-year-old dude in India recently showed up at a hospital two days after suffering a penile fracture. Okay. That's wow. Damn. I'm sure it didn't feel good. It was very unpleasant. But in a few years, he'll have the greatest story to share at a bar ever. I mean, that stops everybody. Yeah, it sure does. Let me tell you about the time that I fractured my penis. And it happened when his kid ran into his bedroom to wake him up and jumped on him. And, of course, he had some morning action, and the kid jumped right on it and, and basically fractured his penis. Well, he didn't just have morning action. Yeah. He took Viagra the night before. He took Viagra the night before. And you know what they say. Sometimes oh, yeah, it lasts yeah, more than four hours. So. It did. Yes. Yeah, I'm looking at the story. It's like it should have it should have worn off in a few hours. It didn't. He also apparently tried to do what you he thought would be helpful to help it wear off. That didn't work either. Uh, so he just went to sleep, said, all right, maybe this will wear off overnight, and it still didn't. And the kid ran in and jumped on him the next morning. See, that's why I'm afraid to take Viagra. I do not want to have that. I don't want that going on for an extended period of time. I only no. need it for when I need it, and then I, you know, as far as, and then you need to be done, and don't bother me anymore. I keep hearing these now, these commercials for, um, because, you know, I listen to a lot of wrestling podcasts, and it's funny. I think, like, advertisers for the wrestling podcast just bounce to wrestling podcasts, the wrestling podcast, and they must think that wrestling fans have um, erectile issues. Oh, yeah. Because it's something called, I think it's called, like, Blue Chew. And it's basically like a Viagra, but it's a chewable, and apparently gets into your system quicker. So if you really just want to get it going, I never heard of Blue Chew. And you get prescribed for it. Like, I'm sounding like a commercial for this because I've yeah, listened to so many damn podcasts where they talk about it. But um, yeah, it's called. I, have you found it? Yeah. Yeah. There it is the Blue Chew. Wow. And it's supposedly when you chew it, it's it gets the, in your system quicker. It has the active ingredient in from Viagra, and also the active ingredient that's used in Cialis. Whoa! They double. They're, they're, they're double headering this, as it were. I don't know. It says have better sex with it. Damn. See, I don't know if that sex would be better. It's just. Uh, I mean, I I just can only imagine what sex that is. Would. Awesome as it is, like you know, I I mean, I yeah, mean, I get if I, you I, need I, it. If yes. you need it, of course. True, true. But, I mean, until I need it, I don't want to give it. Because I know people try it when they don't need it, yeah. thinking that it will make it ridiculously crazy. But then you're walking around with that thing for Do all Do you have the time. curiosity factor of just knowing what it would be like with it? I feel yeah. like I know what it would be right. like. It's like, just once. Do you remember what it was like being a teenager? Yeah. Where you could not control it, and it was yeah. just always there? I feel like that's probably what it's like. But the nice thing is now I don't have Spanish class to go to. <laughs> yeah, there is that. With Miss Carvalho. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Carvalho. So, uh, despite suffering severe pain this dude waited two days to see a doctor about it and when they diagnosed him oh, yeah. have you ever heard of this before they what? diagnosed him with a condition called eggplant deformity that's a real thing is that based off of the emoji i gotta that, hope that this came before the emoji is that why we have the emoji it could be that is a real technical term eggplant deformity for basically fracturing your penis i like one person says i don't care what the commercial says if i have an erection lasting longer than four hours a doctor is the last person i'm calling <laughs> Hey, yeah, you know, off to Nevada. Think about it, though. If you have, if that's lasting for four hours, that's that that can't be pleasant. Uh, I know the why you don't want to have that going on for that long is because eventually the it starts to kind of cut off uh, circulation and basically bad stuff can happen to your junk. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that's why that. you have to go to the doctor because okay. it could break it in a bad way. You don't want a bursted eggplant. Yeah, you don't want that eggplant deformity. Uh, he needed surgery to fix this. Oh, like his one says, he says, that's why I don't sleep on my back. <laughs> Damn. 
He say they say he's fully recovered, but you had to get this was so bad he had to get surgery. You stay away from the Viagra after that, I would imagine. I think I would. And you yeah. probably lock your bedroom door so your kid yeah. can't come in anymore. Yeah, definitely. Oh man, talk about bad timing. It's also really awkward, like having that conversation with a four year old. Like, don't jump on me in that area because they're like why they don't understand it Lily jumps on me all the time and her knee just goes oh everywhere. It's yeah like, stop but you yeah. can't I can loan you my goalie athletic cup that'd be fantastic to protect you when you see your daughter but yes. you tell you but you, you tell Lily about the private parts right I mean, yes, but she Four. doesn't really understand it. Well, yeah, that's exactly what you tell kids about private parts. You usually tell them when they're that, you know, where toddlers, you call them, these are your private parts. And, and is you, it? Yeah, you do. I, I mean, you do, like I said, she doesn't really understand, though. Like, I, she doesn't get well, that when she jumps You just tell her the, that where she goes to the bathroom, those, those are private parts. You don't have that conversation? I mean, I knew about private parts at that age. It's like I knew boys were different and girls were different. And yeah. I know that it hurts. Yeah, that's why you see, say, oh, I don't, I don't even know, know if jump I knew on my private for. I don't remember. <laughs> It's been a while. You don't know how to talk now, so I'm That's thinking. A good point. Yeah, I'm thinking probably it didn't. Steve, I cannot wait for you to be a parent because oh. you are going to be so lost. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'll be YouTubing a lot of things. Because you look at me like, really? Are you sure you're supposed to be doing that? Oh, the conversations you and your wife are going to have are going to be so fantastic because she's going to be spot on. If you ever need anybody to come and give your children the talk, just let me know. I'm oh, available. Yeah. Auntie Vicky is available. Nice. To I give don't them know if the I talk. want Auntie Vicky giving yeah. any because fictional that, child a talk. He doesn't want his kids condoms. underneath high school bleachers, you know, doing what you at were doing. At least I use condoms. Yes, yeah, see that. Bj. Yeah, yeah Bj. What about? Mm. Hey, we yeah, told BJ. our child about condoms. I can't help it if she's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> she's in the other room, you know. Yeah, and I know. The volume turned up. Yeah, that, you know what? She needs to hear that. Every time she doesn't use a condom, she needs to hear tell her dad, tell her she's stupid for not doing it. All right. One person says, I broke my boyfriend's wiener twice during sex. Oh. Whoa, no. Hashtag humble brag. Okay. Right. <laughs> that's, a, that's a woman who's emotionally unstable. Right? I think. Because, I mean, only a woman that's really insane in the sack is going to break your action. That or unless his action's a little either too big or too small. So when you're doing the movement, it just kind of... Or maybe it's a bad out. aim. See, Vicky, I haven't been with enough of anybody to even know that was a thing. Yeah, so, maybe, maybe, I've seen some weird videos. So too small or too see, big? I think she must be a very awesome girlfriend. Because if your girlfriend that breaks your you-know-what-ski once, not once, but twice, and you're still with her, that means she's awesome. Yeah, I suppose. But I think I might be done. Yeah, that's so what I'm saying. Break my action twice? Right. Once I'm going to go, okay, that's fine. But twice? Like, that I, could be a deal breaker. I gotta boot you out the joint. Unless this girl's next level. Yeah, but that next level's breaking your junk. That's not a good level. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you know, see, so you and I have different standards. I think I'll take a little less, you know, a little more mediocrity in the bedroom and not have to go to the emergency room. That's what I, I mean, will. Your wife's used to a little mediocrity in the bedroom, isn't wow. she? Ooh, shots fired. A boom! <laughs> Boom. I didn't know if we needed the sound effect, but okay. we did. Just the look on her face like she was like the most <laughs> evil villain that's ever been in any villainous thing. It's like, really? I made it funny. You know, that's not funny. And you don't know what goes on. My, my you wife. You are vanilla as they You call. don't know how vanilla I am. You have never you're seen you're me. You're scared in- of anything I mention. Like, oh my God, I might wear an outfit. Oh, that's too salty for my old taste. You still don't know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. You can't know. You can't, you can't say I'm vanilla. I could very well be Spumoni. You don't know. <laughs> Right, Steve? I mean, you could be Neapolitan. Yeah. Isn't that the same thing? No? I don't know. I either, yeah, I don't know. either way, they're both good flavors. Well, Neapolitan is the one where you could do the shock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, see, why did you, why, why do you make wrong. the dumb kid laugh? Seriously? <laughs> there she goes. You guys, you really, the two of you are just idiots. So he says, um, I'm 40 and I've had some issues. Uh, I, a small dose works like a, uh, works really well, but if you go with more, then you're like a teenager again. It's a good thing, though. My wife loves it. So you can get a small dose okay i think i break it in half yeah yeah maybe if if that would still work okay i mean i'd be willing to try like a small dose just to see if it i you know the effect it would have i would be willing to do that but i don't want to go full four hours (laughs) damn no all right i uh i want to know the last thing you look at before you go to sleep steve what's the last thing you look at you know who uh probably the pillow Okay. <laughs> I guess that's... Now that I think about it, that's probably what everybody's looking at, right? Yeah, my cat's butt. I should say... <laughs> yeah, my dog's belly. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's not good. I, I should say the last thing you look at before you try to go to sleep. I should say that. Oh, it, it depends. If I'm going to bed at the same time as my wife, my wife, but then there are times that I, I, I'm out and I come home and she's already in bed 
and it's it's usually my phone because I'm uh, setting the alarm and the lights are off, so I'm not going to like turn the lights on. Just be like, hey, babe, I see you. That'd be yeah. weird. I'm the phone guy. Twenty five percent of us actually say it's their phone. The rest of them, I guess, it's their significant other. They're still looking at them. For me, I can't look at my significant other unless I'm on the phone. Yeah, that's a good I, point. So uh, FaceTime's the only way I can see her. So you guys I'm FaceTime at, both. at night before you go to bed? Uh, not all, not a lot. No. But every once in a while we like to just to go, hey, what's up? Do you ever like kind of point it down at your schnitzel? <laughs> Please say you call it your schnitzel. First of all, that is the first time I've heard it called a schnitzel. Oh, that's how we refer uh, to it. And second of all, I can't comment because apparently I'm too vanilla. So why would I do something like that, Steve? You wouldn't do it. You again? You do not know. Group I, chat it. All right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, prove group us, chat. Prove us my wrong. wife and I having phone sex. Why? Uh, I mean, on paper, it's a good right. idea, but you're right. <laughs> All right. Picks or didn't happen. Yeah. You know the, what is wrong with you two today? Are you guys okay? Are you, yeah. Yeah, somebody good, the man. Viagra into I'm your good. stuff. You good? I was good, but I got you know you and Vicky over here were snitzling all One over. One person says, "BJ, you've admitted to being vanilla before." Well, compared to Vicky, I'm vanilla, but I'm not as vanilla as Vicky thinks I am because Vicky's definition of vanilla is oh, really, really light. So you're French vanilla. Okay, yeah, I'll go with that. All right. I like French vanilla. I think I'm probably French vanilla. Oh, I see more vanilla bean. <laughs> Yeah, that's like between. What have right you with- seen? Hey, none of you have seen me in action with Neither my wife the ever. Rev, but yeah, you're all on board with being Mr. Because <laughs> you know why for the Rev. You wear a beret me. when you touch things. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> touch wears, my wee oui, wee. Oui. He wears the French made outfit. Yeah, See who yeah. play with my. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you and Vicky are just both geniuses. Yeah, today. both of you guys are off the rails. It's I kind of fantastic, yeah, actually. They're both just laughing. They're both just morons today. Look at them. They're okay. just happy at their stupidity. Hey, one person says, "I will say my husband's the most conservative person in the world until we're in the bedroom." So you never know lol okay there you go yeah. bj did have that sex swing yeah don't forget that how often did you use it well like we couldn't figure it out that was the problem <laughs> <laughs> Damn thing. you guys are a bunch of quitters yeah most so you crazy contraption it. or get sex, sex swings for dummies yeah dude you have to also be like in good shape to use it that was a problem i wasn't limber enough to make that a thing do what it was supposed to do mm. So I, you just gave up on I don't it. Have a, I don't have a lot of upper body strength, and so that required it, you know? And you know, the last thing you want to do is break your schnitzel. You don't want that to happen. <laughs> True. <laughs> don't want that to happen, buddy. You got to work on your core, BJ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Three quarters of the people still have, uh, you know, still, like I said, are still looking at their wives and boyfriends and girlfriends and husbands. Uh, also, so found out that 93% of people sleep with their phone within an arm's reach, including 10% of them yep. who have it under their pillow. That's me. I really? under your Why? pillow. Yeah, because I am so paranoid of oversleeping, and I like even if I turn the volume up, I'm like, what if I don't hear it? If it kind of goes into my dream, but if it's right next to my head, I could hear it. Oh, that's weird. I I'm have paranoid. it right on the nightstand, right like I mean, within probably two feet of where my head is when we go to bed because I use the alarms and I want to get that thing quick before my wife wakes up and Lulu wakes up as well because then it's just freaking war zone. Well, that's why I put it so far away from me. Granted, yeah, it sucks for the people to sleep with you, but I put it far away because then it will just keep going and eventually I will hear it and get up and have to get up and shut but it see, off. see, I got those two, I have two of them on uh, by, by the TV of those hammer bell alarms. Oh, yeah. And those things are scary. They're jarring in the morning. So, the phone alarm wakes me up, and I know I've got 15 minutes before to get to the hammer. The fireworks go off. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I'm able to get up quick. But I've been guilty of putting it under my pillow if I want to like listen to music. Mm-hmm. You know, I try and wedge it under the pillow so I, I, oh. I'm hoping that she won't hear it. I want to get one of those pillows that it has like a speaker in it. Oh yeah, that's wait, they cool. have those? Oh god, yeah, dude, they're like Bluetooth pillows. Ooh, that's cool. Look oh, it up. look at this. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh boy. It's a game changer, Rev. Game changer. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. If I can't afford to pay my bills, how am I going to afford attorneys and bankruptcy fees? You know, one of the things people ask me all the time as a bankruptcy lawyer is that how am I going to pay all these fees and costs because I'm here because I can't afford to pay my bills. And, I, of course, we understand that. I mean, being, being in, in the bankruptcy field... Uh, but you know, one of the things to remember is is that if you decide once you make the decision to file bankruptcy, you can stop paying on all of the creditors that are going to be included in the bankruptcy, and those are the funds that you can use that you have been paying your creditors to pay your your attorney fees and court costs to get your case filed. And once your case is filed, you're not going to have most of those payments anymore. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. 
I'm Erin Ryan, political commentator, comedy writer, and host of Crooked Media's Hysteria. And I'm co-host Alyssa Mastromonaco, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff for President Obama. Each week on Hysteria, we are joined by a team of hilariously opinionated ladies to discuss the headlines from the serious to the absurd. We cover everything from reproductive rights to rom-coms and break down the political news of the week and cultural stories that affect women's lives. New episodes of Hysteria drop every Thursday. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.